today, and um, so it's me. Uh, welcome. I've been wanting to St. Mary XL's local interest group meeting. Uh, so much has happened since our last meeting, so we're going to go ahead and get moving and try to honor your time. Um, I'm Catherine Holcomb, president of St. Mary XL. Uh, Ms. McCuso's in Sulphur at the Emergency Playoff State Baseball Game for Berwick, the city of Berwick, which is now the city. And um, we are going to go ahead around the table just quickly and just introduce ourselves. I know everybody knows everybody else, but just to be cordial. So, Kelly Boudreau, St. Mary XL. Margaret Terrio, St. Mary XL. Carrie Stansbury, KG Coast Tourism. Evan Boudreau, St. Mary Economic Development. Mike Ricardo, St. Mary Living District. Matt Boyd, Port of Morgan City. Virgil Allen, the Rig Museum. Bryce Merrill, the Rig Museum. Sheila Hugh, SLCC, Young Memorial Campus. The Director, Mayor of Morgan City. Roy Barber. Roger Bodian, AIC. And Dean DeParna Salonic. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate well, you taking the time. To, and there's a lot going on today. Um, thanks for having us. Um, right here uh, on the agenda, our first uh, item is the progress that's been made with the Chaplain National Airstream Research Reserve. Kelly Goodjoy and Margaret Metz have been working with the Pew Research Center, and uh, they're going to update us on what we need to do as a community to be ready and to continue to advocate. We've had wonderful community support, and we need to continue to draw on that support. And I just put some pictures up here. This was April 15th on the bridge. You can see we had community leaders, community members, stakeholders here. Uh, it was really an amazing day that Saturday. Uh, the rain held out until the very end, but it didn't hold out the next Saturday. That was this past Saturday. So we did it under the bridge. We took pictures in Berwick. Um, and you can see we had very good turnout. Um, our parish president, city leaders, again, to historically document their support for the location of the Atchafalaya National Estuary and Research Reserve here. Uh, in this area. Unfortunately, we didn't get to ride and walk the bridge, but the Atchafalaya River is still in the heart of Martin City and Berwick. Uh, this was the public scoping meeting um, at, in, on April 20th at the auditorium. Again, Kelly and Margaret did a wonderful job getting a turnout. We had a lot of people there. Uh, the community concert was going on, and um, it showed, it, even though it took some people away. It showed how vibrant our community is. And CPRA and um, Noah actually thought all those cars were coming to the here and they got a little nervous when they first got there. But our first visit, you can see on the left, showed how diverse we are. The little squirrel was waiting to come in. He was the very first person to try to come in the door. Um, and how welcoming we are also. And on the right, you can see all the people at the hearing. Uh, this was at the auditorium. And a lot of you were here were at that meeting, and we really appreciate you coming. Um, the, this is a map that shows you the approximately 867,000 acres that will be hopefully included in the Atchafalaya National, National Estuary and Research Reserve. You can look at the map and you can see that this is all already state-owned land. So um, this is not going to affect any landowners. And then as the, the, the a near is named, and as things progress, they'll continue to add land to it. But I'm going to go ahead and let Kelly and Margaret take over right now. They're going to tell you what we need to do next. Um, thank you all, and I just want to say thanks for those that showed up at the public school meeting and virtually. Um, Hugh and Noah were very honored to have everyone there, um, and we had some great public comments. As for what needs to happen next is continuously sitting in the public comments. So the deadline, as you see, is May 15th. If you have not, sit them in. The more we have, the better. And I do want to hear if there are any concerns or if you have any suggestions. They, of course, want to hear the acknowledgement or the want and need to have it here and that we're for it. They, they hear that. But they also want to hear if there's anything else that they need to address. That, that, that was my question, and she mentioned the land uh, adding. Do the landowner, and I'm not a landowner, but do the landowners uh, up in the basin or around here have to worry? Because most of the oil companies own the uh, marsh, you know, around here. But that's the biggest concern. I would think that 
people would go against it. And I don't think there's a problem with that. No, so it's state owned right now. But and if you add land, is what I'm getting at. It would be the owners to add the land. Yeah. And there are submissions that you can do to be able to add the land. So they could donate and Correct. get something for it. One thing that we did find is that um, if it's not in the um, final, I guess, boundaries of everything, it takes up to about five years to be able to add that land later on. And you, you, yeah. you all are the, we are the largest. Uh, by, far, by, far. by far. Almost by, by doubled almost. Yeah, yeah. Okay. over doubled. But, um, so you can suggest, like if there's someone that wants their land to be a part of it, this is where you suggest it. So right now they're drafting it they're going to give us a draft and we'll be able to see that draft and also give public comments. So there's going to be another round of this. Mm -hmm. They say it's going to be August. The management plan might be a little bit sooner. The EIS plan will probably be August. So this is just the first initial round where it essentially is for our voices to be put into it for us to be heard. So we can put that aside as far as a lot of these landowners, like I said, are all companies and they can, you know, they have deep pockets and they can fight, you know, no controversy there. It's only state owned. Great. Yeah. Do. Um, the other thing I'd like to address, and I don't have this up, but I, I'll send it to everyone afterwards, is there is a proposed budget cut for the New Year system from the pipeline. And this affects us coming in as a new year that um, we're sharing a bucket of money for all, like right now there's 31 years, we're gonna do the 32nd. So we're sharing the funding coming down. So there's like concerns, of like how is that gonna help us as we're coming into it? There's a, a sample letter that we can be writing to representatives, senators, and um, just people to support and moving this forward of like not having the budget cuts. So I'll share that information with you because it's something that we all need to have our eyes on so that we could be fighting for to keep the, the money in the, the bucket for the near system so we can get all the resources we need whenever it gets built. Yeah, to put in perspective, the uh, 24 fiscal year budget is almost being cut in half in the years. And that's not including us, Connecticut, and U.S. Virgin Islands. Yep. And so each year, whether you're a 50,000 acre or like us, an over 800,000 acre gets the exact same amount of money. So for us to be able to, you know, day-to-day -day management of it, the funds are not there. So that's where Congress needs to come in and really say, hey, hold up. This was actually a, a government idea. This is a federal government plan. This wasn't through NOAA. They just wanted NOAA to run the day-in, day-out um, management of it, and now we're coming back and they're possibly going to cut the fund. So it's kind of... So do you know what the total budget is? We do. We have... and we. So the total budget as of right now is... Um, well, their request is $47 million and $10 million. And there's, like, there's the operational and then the day-to-day. And I think the operational is the forty-seven million, mm -hmm. and don't quote me on that. I have to get those numbers. But then they're cutting it to the proposed cut is thirty-two and a half million to four point five million. Mm -hmm. So thirty from forty-seven million to thirty-two and a half from ten to four point five. And how many of these? I mean, I mean, in total in the United States, you know what that budget is. That is the, well, you take oh, that. That's the whole budget. Yeah. yeah. For thirty-two million. Years? But that's the federal funding. Then you have a state matching. Okay. Then you have a thirty percent state funding too. So are y'all gonna create a letter that we can? That's what. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I have. I have a draft letter from Mira, which is an association supporting the Nears, and they're really, really fighting it. Like here in Washington, they're fighting it. So I'll send that over. Send it to uh, myself or to Jeannie. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll send it to everybody we, on the state. We board. can get it to the right people. Right. Yeah. We can put it in front of them. Yeah. We had the Grace sure. office on Tuesday, Tuesday of last week, and they're very supportive. Yeah. So, um, and we thank you. Yes. Yeah. I would think all our delegation would be. Everybody Absolutely, can, yeah. Everybody will do it, but oh. you know, sometimes we, have, we know people in other delegations not. Absolutely. Well, the momentum right to, now is here, yeah, too, so with the near. So I think that if we kind of ride on the coattails of the momentum, that more and more people will won't be so hesitant to speak up about it too. Mm -hmm. Did anybody talk to the other existing leaders and see oh, how yeah. they're fighting, trying to fight this? Oh yeah, we've, we've yeah. spoken to quite a few. Yeah. And I mean, everybody's 
pretty much doing the same approach as we are. Rebecca Roth through the um, yeah. Near Association is she's a she's all on it. She's yeah. She's yeah. And where is she all? She's Washington. in Washington. Yeah. yeah. She talks to all the the mayors. She is absolutely she's on top of it. The other part of the funding too, and this is something that Margaret and I start off with. Q is there's going to be a Friends of Near group, which is a nonprofit, 501c3, that they can raise money for staffing. The education piece will be a big part of it for our mission because that's such a, a big part of this area. I mean, Ms. Monica, um, Catherine said that it was 436,000 students from this area, mm -hmm. like well, within 70 are, miles. Within the, the, that yeah, could be reached, that can have access to the Near. So, those are going to be another access of funds that will support it too. So you said there's a, a near association? Correct. There is. There's yeah. a. Mm -hmm. So you can't become a member until you're near, I guess. Right, right. Correct. But they're supporting. They're very supportive. Like support. we've had many phone calls, but they are. Listen, everyone <laughs> in this network of near is for us. They want to see this happen so bad. They want this to happen, so they're doing everything they can to support us and support the whole system. And they're headquartered in Washington? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do they get their funding? Um, the Near Association? I'm, 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 not, not, sure. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm I don't, not sure. I would be guessing if it's a 501c3. And you said we have, there's going to be a, a, another group of the friends of, of Near for... Locally. Locally? Yeah. So we'll create the foundation and We'll definitely be talking to y'all about that as far as like board members and to be a part of it. And, okay. I have a quick question though. Uh, May 15th is today's Wednesday, so these comments would have to be in by Monday, this Monday. Mm -hmm. But they can put them online, right? So that's the link, yes. the submit comments to Federal right. Register, that is the link. And I sent y'all all a press release a while ago, and that link is in that press release. And I could just resend y'all a link if you want easy access to it. So now you'll have lots of emails to go through. Yeah. Could we post on Facebook? To yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, on, it's, on, our, it's yeah. on our page, but I can do a repost. Or, and possibly maybe the city, if you send the link to the city, yeah, you can post on the city yeah. in Burlington. I'm happy, sure. happy to post it on the, all of their websites. I don't know if AIC might, I don't know. Um, but that would be something that we could possibly push. Yeah, um, and make sure. At, on that link, you get to see all the public comments. So you see all of them coming through. And there's not, that last I looked, there wasn't that many online. So it'd be nice to have some more online. We have a lot of in-person comments and there's some people that are writing, writ, are doing written statements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to really, that's it, that's it. Unless well, anybody any, has any follow-up questions. questions? Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you need any more information, if you go to Excel's YouTube page, we have tons of videos that you can click on and watch. And, and you can also go to CPRA's uh, website and they have all of the information that Kelly and um, Margaret are sharing with us today. One thing that we'll, we can include on our, the email to y'all is, um, Rebecca with uh, the Near Association is working on a one pager for us, mm -hmm. but we do have um, the latest Near that's been in is Connecticut, and there's a one pager for the economic benefits, the ecotourism benefits of why we need it, and so they're basically all kind of synced together. I mean, we all kind of get the same benefits. Of course, there'll be a Louisiana one that's a little bit more specific, but it'll give you maybe some speaking points for when you brush shoulders with the right people to be, you know, kind of have that dialogue to say why we need it and why we need that funding. And they might inspire your public comment. Yes. Which yes. Where are the closest near? Uh, Texas, 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 Mississippi. Texas, yeah. Mississippi, Alabama. I mean, oh, we're the last. We're the last. So, yeah. Yeah. And can we go visit? Oh, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have, have Roy and I spoke about that. Have, have y'all? We have not. Not yet. But y'all gathering all the information from Rebecca and We talked to many. We yeah. talked to Connecticut. Not that you need yeah. to go to it now. But, but we would love to. Yeah. Yeah. So we might have to the put chase. the boys in the car to go. <laughs> Which Five boys. Times. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you show you're proactive and you say, hey, we have done this, you know, mm -hmm. to, the, mm -hmm. yeah. to the decision maker, you know, 
Yeah. I, I just think the lessons learned uh, in creating this, um, talking to other people, right, yeah. and I've done that already. Yeah, we've spoken to um, Texas because they're huge on the education side of things. They also have a remote location, which is what ours would be, right. of getting a student to a remote location. I mean, it's not like we have a lot of land to walk on. Um, Connecticut is big because they work with the um, their uh, state wildlife federation, which is probably in land, land trust, and so we probably be working with that as well. And we talked to like a, a state run here versus a university. university run here, which is, seems like we're leaning more to university. Yeah. I just went to a conference and. Um, we need, what you probably should do, we talk about the algorithms of Facebook mm -hmm. and social media and the benefits and, and negatives. We really need to do a Friends of our Estuary program. That is fun. Or, no, not, not a Facebook page, okay. it's a group. I got you. It's a group. And, um, and that's really what she said is the hottest thing because of the way the algorithms are, your secondary Excel is not going to come up all right, the time, right. even if you're following it. So she said to, to groups are important. So you might want to get a group of secondary Excel or, or the estuary program where people can join and then that gives dialogue. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Well, um, I'm, we'll go ahead and take some more questions at the end if anybody has any. Uh, if you look up at the screen, you can see uh, Aletha just walked in. Uh, she's in charge of Keep St. Mary Beautiful, and she was the organizer of this event, saying, yeah, I'm going to have to a lot of the city is there in lot. And it's just a great picture, and you can even see the beauty of the estuary behind us. But this is not the first, this is not the, the savior of the area. <laughs> if, the, if the near comes here, which we're so excited and wanted here, um, this is not, this is not the end all. Uh, we have to be prepared, and we have to continue what we've been working on. Um, and we have some people who just came in uh, and didn't get to introduce themselves. So if you were not able to introduce yourselves, I'll start with Scott here and just go around. Okay. Scott Hemmerling with Water and Keep the Gulf in Baton Rouge. Lee Abier, Keep St. Mary Beautiful. I think that's it. Oh, okay. yes. Laura Meadows, Sandra Allen is on this. Sadie Rankin, Morgan T. Main Street. And I'll go on. Uh, and up here, this is something that we've been working on since 2018. Um, St. Mary Excel formed, and of course we got you know the, the community involved. Uh, this is spurred us right here. This ULI Urban Land Institute re report, and in that Urban Land Institute study, which was very involved, and uh, they spoke to stakeholders, community leaders. A lot of you were interviewed by these these people who came. It does merit a reread, and this is all online if you wanted to go back and read this again. It's very interesting to go back and look at it now, five years later, to see what's been accomplished and what, um, what we still can work on to get accomplished in this area, because it doesn't happen quickly. That was five years ago. And um, it's not one person, one entity that will get these things done. It's relying on a collaboration of all of us. And this is where the Resilience Lab comes in. And this is something that, this is separate from the NEAR, um, but it can also work with the NEAR, and it fits in well with the NEAR. And St. Mary Excel has advocated this uh, Resilience Lab since 2020, I guess, before COVID, for sure, and during COVID. Uh, we started to pursue locating the lab here. And former CAO, Henry Bo LeBrange, who is not here today, um, and he's been here at every meeting, and our parish council was instrumental in supporting the idea. Our parish council uh, voted to supply the funds. And um, so Scott is here. He's going to talk a little bit about the Resilience Lab. But what a Resilience Lab does is it conducts authentic coastal field testing and innovation within a locale, offering access to the Louisiana coast, and the Chapalaya Basin River, part of the Mississippi River floodway, it just fits right in with what we can do in this area. What takes place in a resilience lab, an, an example is the North Carolina Coastal Resilience Center. It conducts research and education to enhance the resilience of people, infrastructure, economics, economies, and the natural environment to the impacts of coastal hazards such as floods and hurricanes. So we're here, we're situated you know, right in the basin. Um, 
in an oil and gas community, which is suffering right now. And uh, we can engage in all of this research on sea level rise, on subsidence. This is something that is affecting the entire state of Louisiana, which is disappearing. And it's a locale that has benefited from all of these economies. We can put it together and see what we can do as a community to rebound. What is the resilience of the community? That's what rebounding, that's what resilience is. And we offer an economy of scale um, for field testing. We, we have a small, we, we're Morgan City Berwick, we're on the Atchafalaya River. Um, you can see how we live, and you can look at our infrastructure, you can look at the people, you can look at the natural environment, and it's almost a micro, um, a micro vision of what you see in New Orleans, which is huge. We have the same situations right here but we're dealing with them. And that's what a resilience life can do. Look at how we're dealing with them. Um, how can we um, design, how can we design other businesses that can, or our businesses here, how can they change? How can they adapt? Uh, how do we, we've got this beautiful new drain, drainage pump system that's gonna be built out of the lake, you can see it. We've been working on it, it's huge. How can we use that? How can we show that to the, to, the, to the world? I mean, we're like the Netherlands, basically. And so we can actually bring those people here to see what we're doing. We have to be prepared for that. And um, we're a microcosm. What does that mean for us in Morgan City? The cost benefit factors are more accurate, accurately examined in micro within the 100 year flood wall. We did that, we built a flood wall. We have that flood wall here. We've had people come here from Lake Charles and say, we want that flood wall. Some people say they don't want the flood wall. So, so what are we doing here? How are we, how are we sending that message to the rest of the world? How are we keeping people here? We have marsh, but we're protected with our, with our, our soil rebuilding. The near will study that too, but this is something different. This is for industry and business. This is for, this is for the, the, the community, people who, who finance this community, who keep this community going with their tax money. Um, and with their with their jobs, and how do we, how do we do that? How do we keep that? Uh, but you can see here, we're right in the middle, and you can see there's Morgan City. That's us right there. We, we're just surrounded by water, but we're also protected. That goes to our protected port, right, Mac? You know, we do have a protected port. Um, and I'll stop there because I know y'all know what I'm talking about. So St. Mary Parish has committed its restore dollars from the federal government to be used to contract with the Water Institute in a one-year planning process to hear what the community, all of us, industrialists, leaders, homeowners, stakeholders, what they want and need in the Atchafalaya Resilience Lab, which will be here in Morgan City, Louisiana. Um, uh, Jean-Paul, something happened, he couldn't be here, or he would be here. And he is the newly appointed St. Mary Parish CAO. We're very excited, he's been to the meetings. He knows what's going on. Let me slow down. Take a breath. I know I'm speaking very quickly. I don't want to keep you much longer, you know, longer than you need to be here. And then the Water Institute of the Gulf, Scott Tier, um, and Danielle Johnson is also um, going to be involved in signing the contract with Jean Paul with the St. Mary Parish government. After the contract is signed, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, it's one year, right? We have a year to meet and say what we want. And that's where we need the community and the, the stakeholders to say this is what we want this is how we want to organize it you know there might there might be a question we want to look at um the emotional needs of the people around then we come and we say no 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 emotion was good but this is what we want we want to find out how the dredging affects us we want to do those you know those things so it's very very important and again this is this is on the, this is not affected by the near at all this is happening so, Scott, I don't know if you want to go ahead and sure. say a little bit about it. Yeah, I was kind of taking notes while you were oh. talking about it because you actually hit on it really with something I need to stand for anyone online oh. to see or? No, I'll, I'll okay. it's fine. You, you actually hit on everything really well. And the idea behind, I guess I want to start with the, the near because part of the purpose of the near is education, an educational component. I think that is, that's really 
that connection. And that's how, and the state's very interested in the resilience lab aspect of this because I think in talking with CPRA, I think they see this as a potential way to link with the NEAR and for them to do this educational component. And one thing Catherine mentioned, you know, looking at the map, surrounded by water. That's important, and that gets to the ecological, but one other thing that we're surrounded by is universities. There's not a university in Morgan City itself, but we have ULL, we have McNeese, we have Nichols, LSU. We're centrally located for this to be a research hub where people can come in and learn about the ecology, where students can come in, where we can really, this, this is an ideal spot. It's only one of the only spots in the state where there's land building going on. Now, if you look out at Wax Lake Delta, that's building land. The rest of the coast is losing land. That's, some, that's really something important to, to note and another reason why something like the Resilience Lab could be here. But I'll also mention, and Catherine, you mentioned industry and business, you mentioned the ecology, we mentioned flood protection, we mentioned emotional needs, you mentioned dredging. All of these things are important. And if, if you think back to the slide that Catherine just showed where the Urban Land Institute recommended a resilience lab, you'll notice there was no details there. It said, this is an ideal location for a resilience lab. You can partner with people to, what does that mean? I think that's one thing that we've been kind of dealing with. And that's really the purpose of this next year is to do the strategic planning for the resilience lab, bringing residents in, bringing industry in, bringing educators in, bringing folks from the state who are working with the NEAR, bringing in LUMCON who were instrumental working with all of y'all to get the, the NEAR here. So the idea is over the next year that we will do, a, it's called structured decision making. It's a very organized process where we go through step by step. Let's find out the needs, let's find out the needs of industry. Let's really, the Resilience Lab is for all of you here and it's for all of you to decide. It's not for someone outside to come in and say, well, what will make Morgan City and what will make St. Mary Parish resilient? That's gonna come down to all of those comments, all those things that we mentioned. You need the flood protection. You're behind the flood wall you know, portions, which when we talk about our other project we have in a few minutes, you'll see there's parts that are outside of the flood wall that aren't as protected. There's you know, the education and business aspect. You know, with platform fabrication kind of went downhill in the 80s and 90s, what's kind of stepped up to replace it? I think the Resilience Lab can be a part of that. And again, again, I think this is really an important component. And I, I see the fit with the NEAR. I see it fitting really well. The, the kind of that educational component of the Resilience Lab can fit really well with what the NEAR is required to do. So. As soon as we're set and ready to go, the next process is really going to be bring in representatives from as many stakeholder groups as we can get from the region. Let's get educators in. Let's get recreational users. Let's bring in scientists. Let's bring everyone together to get around a table and really go through this structured decision making process. Let's come up with what's the mission statement of of the near is it just is it business and industry is it business and industry combined with ecological protection mm -hmm. i think coming up with that mission statement is one of the first steps in that structured decision making process and then we go through how do we make it happen let's look at the alternatives let's discuss the alternatives decide on the best path forward so it's going to involve a lot of a lot of meetings a lot of back and forth but that's really what's vital to making this happen because it's got to come from the community this process has to come from the community. And you all know better than anyone what it will take to make Morgan City. You know what it, you know why you're all here. You know why Morgan City's here. You know why, you know, this is in our previous workshops, this has come up all the time. You want your kids to stay here. What will it take to make your kids stay here? These types of things are all what speaks to the resilience of the community. And you mentioned with the, you know, Resilience as the ability to rebound. The next step beyond the ability to rebound is to rebound Stay. and move forward. Because if you just simply rebound and put yourself back to where you were, you know, when whatever risk or threat hit you, 
you're going to be in the same boat having to rebound again and again. But how do we rebound in a way that makes you able to move forward and be more resilient in the future? So that's really the, the whole purpose of what this next year will be. It will be to come up with a, a structured plan, including you know, how is it going to be funded? What's it going to do? Who's going to be involved? What will the leadership of the Resilience Lab look like? All of these things will come into the planning with it. So when we come out of this year, we will have a, a plan to move forward where if we have to go and pursue funding, everything will be in place. Where you can submit this document and say, beginning with the ULI report, here's what was recommended, here's how we get there, now here's our funding mechanism, here's how we make it sustainable into the future. And I also mentioned Danielle Johnson, who's our grants and contract person. She grew up in Franklin, so she's she tends not to get out of the office doing her grants and contract stuff, but this is one project where she said, I want to be involved in, in this process. So she's really excited about this, and as are a lot of folks with the Institute. It's been you know, well before COVID, a couple years before COVID, when we had the first meeting to discuss how we move forward, and, yeah. and now we're... Yeah, it's We're great. There, so. Great. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, if anyone has any questions. Well, has yeah. anyone ever linked the two and presented it to like NOAA and CPRA? I mean, I didn't know if mm -hmm. y'all had done it or if y'all in the background, sure. When, C yeah. CPRA is. I, yeah. I was actually at a meeting with kind of where they were next steps on the near, and Robert Twilley was there, mm -hmm. and Lung Khan was there. All those folks were there. And the person from CPRA, specifically brought up the resilience lab so this is in this is in their Scope. their ears and they're aware of it and i think yeah i think they see they see the connection for it i think they see it as an opportunity to really for us to take a portion of the the near that they right. weren't sure how to move forward with yeah it's great it's good. thank you scott we're going to come back to that when we talk about um the school um, but thank you very much. I don't know, and if anybody has any questions, maybe at the end of the, when we finish the meeting, we can talk to Scott a little bit more about it. John Paul may show up. Okay. Yeah, and I know he's probably caught. And Bo was so helpful, he's retired. And, and, and I think that's one other thing that's kind of interesting about uh, just the whole group. This is all, we, we have politicians, we have different mayors, we have different governors, we have different senators. But this is something that's supposed to sustain us through that, um, our group, our meetings. It's not, it's not based on one person getting something done for us. It's us getting something done for us. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, this next, um, I'm going to skip this and come back to this. Thank you, Scott, and I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Mayor Dragon, we're going to come back to this when you give us your report to the, uh, about the grants, because we want to hear about the grants. Um, uh, with, as far as the update, but this right here, uh, this is just a picture. Monica was driving down the road, going to the um, the, the center for the, uh, the youth to go help and volunteer at, at um, Young Young Foundation, the, the Young Center, and she happened to see the the surveyors surveying the, the road, Young's Road, for the bike trail and hiking trail. Uh, so she stopped. What are y'all doing? And and <laughs> Oh, we're here from the federal government surveying, whatever. So this started in 2018, the grant that we wrote, and it's 2023, and they're surveying. So I just wanted to throw the picture in so you, you can see how long things take. You know it. And it's we just need to keep working. Uh, okay, it's, it's safe for us to public places. It's safe for us to public places. We're right. It's we're safe for us to public right. places, yes. <laughs> it's safe for us to public places, but if you want to get on a bike and use it safely, you can, of course, right? Okay. So uh, I'm going to go on to the Coastal uh, Studies and Maritime School. Um, We've been working on this. Uh, Stephen was supposed to be here today. He couldn't make it. Stephen Swagger, he's in St. Mary XL. The Atchafalaya Coastal Science and Maritime High School is a project that we've been working on uh, because we saw the need for our community to um, be involved in. And actually, this was before the, the near, sort of as well, or at the same time, before we even knew that the near was going to really come here, possibly. And. Uh, I have to say, I have to say possibly, because it is, but 
things could right. change. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we still wait, can wait, do this. Wait. When you say things can change, what do you mean by that? It won't be official until probably late December or January. I, I know. I keep hearing the governor has to sign off on right. that. Right. So what do you mean by that? When you say things can change. They have to fund and show up. No, no, that's not really what would be yeah. it. The, the biggest thing would be um, if there was any loopholes with people resisting it, which that's why we keep being, it's a, if there's well, any issues that you see up. At, with these landowners, these, these oil companies, you know, Timberlayer Island uh, was a big fight mm -hmm. and because they wanted, they didn't want to lose the protection of mm -hmm. Timberlayer Island. Mm -hmm. But LL&E and Texaco on the island, they didn't want to give up the surface rights. And, and, uh, there won't, there's the no rights, rights to be given up. Not whatever the state rights. regulations are for that acre, whatever it is, is will may, be maintained. So, so the state won't have to have insurance uh, for this. Will be a uh, this will be a federal seventy thirty. It's federal federal seventy and state. So, 30. so liability plays a part in this. Uh, and, and those, yeah, that would be a no question. But, but it's a good thing. Those because it comes yeah, but yeah. those are great seven. things that I think Kristen. With Noah, Kristen is uh, is basically running this with Noah. She wants to hear that. Yeah, she doesn't. They know CPRA and Noah know that we want to hear. Yeah, they want to hear the CPRA and they're powerful because they they do the funding or they they don't do the funding. They distribute the funding, mm -hmm. but their way of thinking isn't always correct. In, in our in our case, and I'm getting off on a tangent here, but south of here. Their way of thinking is different than some of our way of thinking. It's the business thinking. Well, right. uh, well I, think, I think pumping of, of silt to Terrebonne and all south of here mm -hmm. is is more of a way to go than versus trying to do the, the river thing uh, like they're doing because you get more current down there. But but that's another. Right. Well, what's right. currently like they're, they're not going to add new regulations. What is happening right now will not be maintained. Yeah. That does not. I, I just you know we need well, to. And if there's concern, you keep those people yeah. should put Absolutely. in their comment. Right. Absolutely. That's what it, that, yeah. Now would be the better time before the management plan comes out in August right. because then it would be like a backtrack. And, and Kristen is more than willing to speak to any group. Yeah, I, I just, you know, we'll make comments, yeah. right? But I understand what he's saying. I'm a large landowner too. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's, everybody's always trying to sue you, right? That's just the way it is. That's part of it. <laughs> but yeah, if you but allow other people that. onto your land, so I've heard comments about, hey man, what happens when they decide? They want to expand this thing ten years from now, and, it, and somehow some somebody passes some eminent domain uh, deal uh, with restrictions uh, where you can't take your land, where you take your service rights. Well, they right? well, they have to go through the whole process right. again. Yeah, yeah. like oh, so every it? year they just have to add on to it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And then oh, it yeah. takes right so now I, in Texas. We spoke with mm -hmm. um, the director in Texas and. People were hesitant to donate land because they wanted to wait and see how things happen. And now that they've seen the success with it, there's really not a lot of loopholes, the education involved with it. People are actually, yeah, go ahead and we want to donate part of our land. But they're like, well, what, we can't take it now. You're going to have to wait another five years because they have to rewrite the management plans for it. And every five years they have to go through redoing or updating the management plan too. So. I, I really don't see it. You know them expanding this right now this is going to be the largest one yeah. Yeah. i just thought it was up in the basin and i know there's big land on the there and they're not going to yeah. give up yeah. but uh yeah this is yeah they're um, um, but see, if there's concern i know i would definitely concern there. Yeah. she wants to hear those things they want right. to yeah. i would i would do that but simply because there's somebody that will not understand right the educational component or that it's only using land already in place mm -hmm. that's owned by the state. I mean, that, yeah, that, that was actually, that was actually my point I was going right. to make. In the, dis, in the deciding factor when you're organizing to get the near here, one of the things they had to look at was how much of the land mm -hmm. in each of the areas were state and federally owned. And that was one of the primary things they looked at. So the land that the near is going to encompass will be the the state and federal lands. I, there's no, they specifically wanted to avoid issues of 
private land ownership. And that's actually, honestly, one of the things that set a, a Chapalaya apart from our rest yeah. was the amount of- And I think of, that's how they drew the boundaries. Mm -hmm. right. and, yes. and then, and as far as uh, surface rights, they're not gonna right. fool mm -hmm. with that. They have no intention of fooling with that. The only way they would is if the, the landowner offered. offered. Yeah, but otherwise, but there's right, no, right. There's no they're staying there. away from yeah. that. Can y'all see the comments? Yeah, yes. Yeah. On that you website, can as well. Okay. Yeah, when we have you have you gotten any negative? We have one. one. And it was actually a comment of, that we're actually talking about now about state changes, about Elmer's Island and Grand Isle. Well, and I, and I think, and this has been said from Jump Street, I think there's a misconception that some of these landowners may have is, oh, they can come in and they, they're going to take our property. Yeah. And, that's been off the table for us right. from the beginning. Yeah. But, but you don't, we don't know, we don't, we don't, the public doesn't right. know that. Right, well, I think that's the problem. The public doesn't know. There is a Q&A page on this. It's two and a half times bigger than anybody else already. Not to mention, if this is a federal, if this is a federal program, we're not talking about passing local laws to change it. We're talking about, you know, passing federal That's why they have to get back. Which is much more difficult. No, I think it's, it's positive and the state is going to get off of uh, you know some serious insurance probably for the man i say serious is probably not a, well then but they, they're going to have to come up with insurance in anyway huh to reserve already yeah but, reserve. but the federal is going to the federal is going to pick up 70 percent of it now right pick up 70 percent of that mm -hmm. Which is already so funding, funding, funding of the funding. Oh, the funding. But, yeah. Yeah. but like yeah. funding, but the funding is great. I mean, mean is they're very involved in the Chaplain National Heritage Program and the and the Chaplain Wildlife Refuge. All of that's being funded by the federal government too. So, yeah, this is all something that um, all we, we don't know yeah. who's gonna. It's either state or university. Right? I was gonna talk about that. that. Yeah, right. right. But that's federally nice. funded. 70%, 30%. So, and that's, and what we hear is leaning university, but we don't know that. Don't Which know that. means CPRA would not, CPRA is, has just kind of been put in a place to come up with the EIS and management, and management plan. plan. That doesn't mean that after the official that they'll be the ones which it doesn't even sound like they are. Yeah. No. I think that they would just kind of but these are great, put put more on their plate to do and it. And if there yeah. are more, you can send them our way <laughs> or have Kristen talk to people yeah. or, or put it in yes. the comments. They have, they have a certain mindset. And, I get it. And, I get you know, it. it's like, you, you know. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's unknowns as a fear thing, but it's. Okay. Right. Educate, educate the public. Right. Well, that's that. What you're saying is so important that everybody needs to stay aware because I didn't yeah, this. yeah. I mean, this has been this has been for a long time. All this information. And we're so, happy to go do. Yeah. We have a PowerPoint yeah, presentation that answers all these questions. I'll show it. If you so, reduce it to two pages, <laughs> okay. right? Straight lines. Well, that's what that right. one pager is that we'll yeah. send okay. y'all. Yeah. Which is we like we said, it's a Connecticut one, and they're working on the Louisiana. <clears throat> right now and it's a, it's a great bullet point so just yeah. it stops tune in to part two of the st mary local interest group meeting on the maritime high school and its economic benefits and also listen to scott hemmerley of the water institute